by the end of this video, folks, you're gonna have the knowledge and the know-how to drive sand dunes. All we gotta do is put all these things to practical use. We got the Troopy out and we got the highly modified 79 out. Engine braking, momentum, and tire pressures. That's all the general stuff, and we're gonna talk about that first. Now, if you're familiar with that stuff already, jump points down below, skip to the juicy stuff, like Razorbacks, the humps, what speed to use, what gear to use, how to reverse down a dune when you're in the sh Let's get into it. Let's talk tire pressures. What should you have for your vehicles? A light vehicle, an LV, that's what's on your screen right now. That's you should be starting around 12 to 14 PSI because it's so light. Now, depending on the tires as well, if you have normal road tires, you probably don't need to go too low, but we're talking about all terrains and mud terrains here, proper off-road tires. These two I will class as medium vehicles because they're not fully loaded, they're quite light still. Having proper off-road tires, 16 to 18 PSI is a good starting point, and from there, you can branch out to whatever tire pressure suits your vehicle. Okay, as I said, this is a medium vehicle. That's what I consider it to be anything sort of three ton or less but if we had the big canopy on the back then this would be a heavy vehicle it would be three and a half ton plus therefore our tire pressures need to be a little bit higher because there's more weight on the tires already they're already backing out a little bit 20 to 22 psi for a heavy vehicle and then branch out from there look every vehicle is going to be different tank condition is going to be different so play around with your tires now keep in mind these are just cheat codes for your starting pressures branch out from there one more thing if it's summer Lower your tires a little bit more because the sand's going to be softer. In winter, you can probably get away with having slightly more air in your tires because the sand is usually denser. This is our current footprint. We're going to see the increase right now. Engine braking 101. And we're in first gear low and we're cruising down this dune. No feet are touching any pedals whatsoever. We're just going to steer it, make sure the wheels are straight, and down we go. Easy as that. One thing you should always do though, is jump out of your vehicle and check out the dune before you drive down because it could be a bowl, it could be some other sketchy on an angle kind of situation. There could also be vegetation. We don't want to be driving over vegetation for many reasons. Feet off the pedal, down you go, first gear low, nice and steady. Once you get to the bottom, you can start fiddling with your brakes and accelerating, changing gears and whatnot. Momentum 101. Momentum's not all about speed. It's about holding the right momentum in the right situation and just measuring it as you go. The more you drive, the more you get used to it. Coming up to a dune, you need to hold a good steady momentum as we go up. There we go. So you want to kind of hold the same speed all the way up to dune or slowly lose a bit of speed as you're climbing. What you don't want to have to do is still increase speed as you're climbing. That's not holding momentum. That's called fanging it. Momentum, same thing, going up a dune, going across a dune, just keep that nice steady pace. It's the same with beach driving and sand driving. If you go too slow and you don't hold that momentum, you could bog down and then that's when you get bogged. When you get bogged, it's very hard to get going again, especially if the sand's soft. On a dune, if you get stuck on a dune, you're gonna have to go back, you can't go forward because gravity is working against you. So what gearing should you use on sand dunes? Well, look, just use low range most of the time. You can use high range when you're going in between dunes uh, and when you get comfortable, some dunes you'll need second gear high to go up, other dunes you need fourth gear low or second gear low. It just all depends. Definitely always wear your seatbelt when you're on the dunes. Just wear your seatbelt anywhere anyway. You're just being stupid if you don't wear your seatbelt, especially on dunes because you don't know all of a sudden if you're gonna roll over. That's one thing, because it's a very unpredictable idea. Uh, the other thing, when you go down these really steep dunes, the seatbelt actually holds you in. When you're not sure about a dune and it looks really steep, there is another thing you can do. And that is called just crawl up to it and go up a little bit and then back down. You're doing a couple of things here. One, you are compacting the sand. You're testing how soft the sand is, but more importantly, you're testing out if you're actually going to nose into it. And that's a good way to check sometimes because you don't want to just come flying up to a dune and then you smack your nose into the dune. You don't want that. That's how you do damage to your vehicle, especially to IFS vehicles because they tend to squat on the front. Solid axle vehicle, 
not too bad, but just check it out first. And that's what we're doing now. I'm confident I'm gonna give it a crack. Windows up, we don't want sand in the cab. Got a bit of air in that one. <laughs> it's time to go down a really steep dune now. This isn't to be toyed with. If you have a rear locker, put the rear locker in. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You don't really need it. Just the rear locker will create a little bit of extra stability in the rear. First gear low, just point it straight down. That's important, get it straight. Once you're pointing straight down, all my feet are doing right now is they're hovering above the accelerator, that's it. If you're going too slow, and you can go too slow down a big dune, just pump the accelerator a little bit, just to gain a little bit more speed. Because the downward momentum, you don't want too much of it, a bit of downward momentum keeps the vehicle straight. If you go too slow and you tap the brakes, that's when you can go sideways, and that's when it goes pear shaped. And that's how you do it, folks. Don't touch your brakes. Touch the accelerator only if the sand is overtaking the vehicle. Nice and gently, down you go. Engine braking, must have engine braking. These big dunes, they're not things to be toyed with until you've got experience with them, because when things go wrong on these big dunes, it goes really wrong. Of course, when you get to the bottom, you can take the rear locker off if you had it in. But like I said, it's not necessary. But if you have it, you might as well use it. General approach on dunes. Rounded side I'm approaching here. You don't really know what's on the other side. So as you go up, you want to let off a bit of speed. You want to keep enough so you can still get to the top. But you definitely want to take off speed just in case it's a razorback. Like a drop off. And I'll take you to one of those right now. Now I need a bit of momentum to get up this side and then it's a sharp drop off. So that's where if, if you go too fast, this will happen. Oh, here we go, Razorback June approach. A bit of speed here, a bit of momentum, up we go. All right, gearing down, first gear low. You just want to keep going though, because if you stop at the top, you can end up stuck. So first gear low, everything's like feet are off the pedals. And I'm going down. So it's good to have a seatbelt on. Funny thing with a dune like that. Now today's pretty easy, the ground's pretty hard, but when you get more of a peak and it is soft, you can get stuck on the top. And I've done that a couple of times. I've done it towing a trailer once, and then I had someone try to rescue me, but he got stuck as well. And I've done it out here once before with my old Hilux as well. If you get the timing wrong, you're gonna end up on the peak and then your tires aren't really contacting firm ground because it's just sand and they're just sitting there spinning. Front and rear, you're kind of screwed. The only way to get out of that is really with a snatch strap or you could be digging for a very, very long time. Another thing as well, if you do just get stuck at the top and you sink your front tires in like I did just the other day out here, you can use your max tracks unless you've dug yourself right down. So if you're still sort of on top and you know you're not moving forward, get those max tracks off, put them on the back wheels, because the fronts aren't doing anything anyway, and then get yourself over that dune. And then do the long walk back up to get them. Perfect opportunity, guys. This is a situation most people would freak out in. They don't like. I've been in this many times before. But if you're not used to sand dunes and you have to reverse down a dune and there's angles involved, it can be daunting, it can be scary. It's not a good situation to be in if you're worrying about it. Number one, do not panic. We're not gonna panic here. Foot's on the brake. If you're not in low range, I am in low range though, but say if you were in high range, you're in this situation, put yourself into low range right now. This is where you need to do it because you need to slowly go back in reverse. This is essential. Make sure your wheels are straight. Now, if you can't see your wheels yourself. Ask someone else if you've got someone with you. Chris, are my wheels straight? Yeah, that's straight. Thank you. You will find that you will be stuck in because when you're on an angle, seatbelts get jammed. Um, but it keeps you nice and tight. I'm kind of ready to climb here, it's quite nice. So we're gonna now reverse the vehicle into reverse and then now we need to just control the vehicle back. Okay, you need to commit. Don't touch that brake because your front wheels will lock up faster than your back wheels. If you slam that brake on, you can go sideways. You go sideways, it's not gonna end well. So just, it's daunting, all right? It's scary, but just commit to it. And the good thing is, you'll have your tracks you can probably reverse down to. If you pop out of them like I have right now, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. Just hold your nerve, 
reverse down. And that's pretty much how you do it. I've now found a different approach in this tune. We're gonna try this out. If you want to get over a dune and you need to, there's always a better line. This is a sand bowl. So how do you get out of a sand bowl? Well, there's a special technique. We're going to start in third gear low. Yes, we're going to start in third gear low. I'll show you exactly how. You've got a short run up. So what you have to do is you have to get your bum up as far as you can. Start in third gear low. It's the only way you're going to do this. Use momentum downhill. Stay in third, you've got no time to change gears. So here we go. Just like that. That's the best way to do it. If you don't get it the first shot, just try again. Uh, eventually you'll get it. And if you do the same tracks over and over, as long as you don't chew it up, you'll be able to make it up. Because uh, every time you do it, you're compacting the ground. Best way to do it. For those who have noticed that I don't run a sand flag, and you're probably giving me crap in the comments, well look, if you want to run a sand flag, go for it and run a sand flag. The thing with sand flags is it does give you a false sense of security. Um, if you don't see a flag, you think the dune's okay. That's never the case. So that's why I just don't roll with sand flags anymore. If I'm going to drive up a dune, I'll just make sure there's no one on the other side. The best way to do that is just be aware of where you are. Always be aware of where you are. I think if you rely on sand flags, that's dip down sideways as you're going up a dune. It's kind of a false sense of security. It is a great way to locate someone though, because you do have this thing sticking up. But you can always look for an antenna on a vehicle, or tall vehicles, roof racks, max tracks on the roof, they generally stand out. So just be mindful of your surroundings rather than relying on a sand flag. But of course, if you want a sand flag, chuck a sand flag on your vehicle. The two worst times to drive on dunes. Today is winter, it's about midday, it's fine. We've got nice te textures on the sand, we can see all the hills, we can see the drop-offs, but in summer, at high noon, there are no shadows, there's so much reflection, you end up slowing down because you're just not sure what's coming up ahead, and you can drop off. The other bad time to drive dunes is at night, because you can't see the better path to take. You can't see where the drop-offs are. All you can see is where your lights are shining. So if you ever do get caught out in the dunes at night because you got bogged or whatever, follow your track back out. That's the best way of doing it. But also be mindful. If it's really windy, your tracks are gone. All right, guys, there's my knowledge and experience passed on to you guys. Now go out there, give it a crack. Just start small and work your way up. Make sure you do those Razorbacks very last. All right, guys, good luck. <laughs>